Greetings, fellow Simmer, and welcome. Welcome to more 4K eye candy action with me, Gripper Sim. This week, uh, I thought I'd appear out of the blue. I know, I know I'm supposed to be taking a break till September 1st, I know. But I couldn't, I just couldn't leave this one out because it's, it's the new Just Flight PA28 Warrior 2. Uh, and I'm going to explain in this video why I think it's, it's going to be beneficial for you in Flight Simulator, potentially. Uh, and why it's one of those aircraft, uh, well, it's built, for, it's built for training in the real world, okay? Uh, now, the, the particular model in the real world was cer first certified in 1976. And it has 160 horsepower like Wyoming engine. And it was built particularly for flight training and personal use. We're going to have a look at the model. Uh, I'm going to take it up for a quick, very messy circuit, actually. A very messy circuit. And I'm just going to give you my opinions of a real pilot who's flown this aircraft for quite some hours, actually. Uh, and I'm going to chat to you with that. It's kind of recorded live. Uh, so, yeah. Now, uh, we're, we're, in, we're in Saba. Saba! Yes, uh, one of my favourite airports. Very short. Uh, yeah, very short. But it'll be a little bit of fun. So, let's have a look at what Just Flight's saying. Following on from the popular PA28 or Arrow 3 and PA28 or Turbo Arrow 3 and 4 from Microsoft Flight Simulator, this highly detailed simulation of the PA28 Warrior 2 from Microsoft Flight Simulator has been developed by Just Flight's in house team following comprehensive, hands on research with a real life Warrior 2 Golf Bravo Oscar Zulu India based at Connington Airfield in the UK in England. Already a very popular aircraft on other platforms, we are excited to bring you this incredibly detailed rendition of the Warrior 2, complete with realistic wear and tear and cockpit configuration. I've just been going through their very comprehensive list of features, and I just have a summary for you here. So uh, the model is built, uh, as I kind of already said, using real world aircraft plans and photography. Uh, there's numerous animations, like the passenger door animates, the baggage uh, door animates, the storm windows, the, the window on the left-hand side of the cockpit animates and changes the sound, which is brilliant. Sun visors work and the oil cover works, etc., etc. It has high res textures uh, throughout. Uh, that's 4096 by 4096, so it's very high res. Also, it has full effects, including icing. Uh, that would obviously include the actual physical icing you see on the aircraft if it does build up and of course carburetor icing. The cockpit basically has everything, okay? It has, uh, ev even the circuit breakers work on this and the logic works and there's the, everything, every single button that I could find works on this. So, you know, would I be wrong in saying it's study level, you know? Uh, let me know if you have this and if you think it's not study level, let me know what you think if it isn't because I, I, I can't, you know, I've flown these and it's everything works. So it's got to be study level, doesn't it? So I'm going to say study level until you correct me in the comments. Uh, now give me a good reason though, okay? Uh, also, uh, it features a spark plug fouling uh, where carbon builds up in the spark plugs if you're running a rich mixture, for example, too much, uh, which is great. That's when you're doing your power checks, if you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, the battery life is also limited, okay? Uh, which is very realistic. Uh, it has vapor lock and all those failures as well. The sound is stunning throughout uh, to the last detail as far as I'm concerned. So it is, uh, you know, let's, let's have a look at the cockpit. Okay, let's have a look at the cockpit. Now I know I'm a little bit biased here because I've flown these in the real world, but I do tend to only showcase aircraft models that I would buy, okay? Um, and this is one of those. So Just Flight is one of the ones you're, you're kind of safe with, I think. Now, have a listen to the sounds here, hang on. You'll hear me all the time saying that we've got only two senses to use the f with a flight simulator. We've got our vision and we've got our, our hearing, our sound. And sound is very important. And thankfully, developers are paying more and more and more attention to the sound, which is absolutely great in my book. Uh, now, let's go and fly. We're in the cockpit. Yes, uh, we're in the cockpit. And we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do a quick circuit. Uh, I have taken off in the new Warrior, uh, the new Warrior 2, just uh, about an hour or two ago did one quick landing uh not much uh just to have a look around the aircraft a fair bit now uh why have i come out of hibernation to uh review uh or at least showcase really this aircraft 
Uh, well, two reasons mainly. First of all, I've flown them in the real world, both as a student, uh, both as a pilot and an instructor. Um, a couple of hundred hours. But not a lot, a couple of hundred hours. So I've gotten to know them quite well. Now, all low-wing aircraft have the same characteristics. Uh, but I thought this one, I'd, I'd pop up on YouTube and show you this one because, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm a real-life pilot on these. I have been. Uh, and second of all, you will find these in most flight schools. Okay? Uh, and the beauty of this is once you're simming and you're flying around in it, you can ring up your local flight school, ask for an introductory flight. They'd be delighted to hear from you. Uh, and you can fly the real thing for an hour. Easy. And your first lesson, you'll get to fly. You will get to fly and handle the aircraft. You may, they may not let you land it, though, you know, uh, at, for your first flight, but you'll get to fly it for sure. Uh, now, so that's the, the motivation here. Uh, also, I do find these models that just like come out with are really, really very good. Uh, this is this is all second nature to me. OK, the, the look of the aircraft, the sounds of the aircraft, etc, etc. Now, uh, let's have a look around first. We're going to we're going to have a quick look around the cockpit, get the engine started to a quick circuit. And I'm going to give you a running commentary as what I think is a real flight instructor uh, and haven't haven't flown this aircraft in the real world uh, and how it could help you uh, if you are that way inclined to try a real one now first of all bringing up if you haven't flown before if you're coming if you're you know looking forward for the xbox version flight simulator okay it's the exact same thing as the pc uh i just want to point out to you if you're going to start simming this this here now first of all flying real flying is looking outside by the way which is great news just look outside uh but here this six pack pay attention to this you'll always have your airspeed indicator you'll always have your artificial horizon you'll have your altitude you have your sip and turn indicator, you have your direction indicator, uh, and your vertical speed indicator. It's called the six pack. So pay attention to those a little bit. Uh, that's where you kind of start. And all uh, steam gauged aircraft, they're all they're all the same. Now, uh, with Just Flight's model, I have this little pad here, and that's just some extra things. First of all, I'll start on the right side here. Uh, I know for you, it's the other way around, as you see it. Now, uh, chocks, you can have the chocks on and the tie downs on. Uh, red is off. Now, if I have the chocks, chocks or the tie downs on, I can't move forward. Won't let you. So you gotta, you know, get get rid of them. Uh, uh, you gotta get rid of them. It's very funny because in real life, uh, you'll see all the aircraft in a line, and I'm talking to a student outside, uh, and someone's trying to move forward with the chocks on or the tie downs on. It's very common. It's very embarrassing as well. I almost did it once. I was actually in the airplane, about to start. And I saw someone looking over, you know, they're waiting for me to start the engine for some reason. I said, oh my God, there's something wrong. Uh, and the tie downs were on because I wasn't used to, you don't tie them down like that in Ireland. They do in America. So yeah, it's very common. Tow bar, uh, wheel, now tow bar. Okay, that's the towing bar. Wheel fairings. Uh, the wheel fairings, if I just quickly show you, uh, let me just put them on first. The wheel fairings are here. Now in the real world, they, uh, they'll save you maybe four to five knots, the cruise. So save you a bit of fuel. Um, but in the real world, if it's, uh, you know, if, if you go to a flight school, they'll be removed because they're a pain in the neck. There are a lot of maintenance. Usually uh, most schools have grass. You, you get used to landing in grass. And they break, they crack, uh, and they just become a problem. So most flight schools will just remove those for that very reason. Um, less maintenance and less hassle. You can see the wheels, you can get to the wheels easier when you're doing a walk around, etc. So you'll see those removed. Uh, checks fairings. Uh, you can open up the cabin door. Now, to open up the cabin door on these uh, properly, you just two locks. There's one here. There's one up here. Uh, and then there's, you push it with the door handle here. See? To close it, type, press the door handle, lock one, and there's lock two up above here. You see the door kind of close in there. Brilliant. So that's how you can close the doors. Or if you're feeling a little bit lazy, you can just simply hit that button. So they have nice stuff like that. Just one button. The baggage door as well is behind. You saw that in the in the video before. That's the baggage door there. Uh, you can have that open if you want and close it. Just have a look around. Also, uh, now, aircraft options. Auto fuel selector. No. 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 Auto fuel selector. No. No. Now, it's fine to have it there, uh, but effectively, when you're flying uh, a low-wing aircraft, okay, the the fuel is in each wing separately. 
right? And they're individually fed to the engine, all right? Now, and what you do is every half an hour, let's say it's fuel, switch is fueled off now, so I'm going to switch that to left, okay? Uh, now I'm taking fuel out of the left tank, and every half an hour or so, I have, I'm to change, uh, I want to change the tank, because if you just leave it on the left and you forget to run out of fuel, and the engine will stop, and you think you have an engine failure. Uh, you don't want to do that now, do you? But if you did have an engine failure, just, oh God, switch it to the right, okay? But it's very easy to forget, uh, potentially, okay? Uh, that's why I say uh, no to the auto fuel selector. Don't, don't get into that habit, okay? So that is red, meaning off. Another thing I like about this airplane is, now, in the real thing, uh, it won't be exactly, it will be very, it will be exactly like this, but what I mean is, it may not have two VORs, VOR, VOR, NAV1 and NAV2 here, right? It may not have those, it may have one or may have none, okay? Uh, it may not have the fancy garments here. So you've got two garments here. Uh, and what just right have done, very nicely, is they, you see this, a GPS, a GNS dual. I can have the old radio stack here and the Garmin 530. Or... Just the old radio stack, NAV1, NAV2, COM1, COM2, and a Garmin 100, which is really old. I've never even seen one of those. Um, or, or none. So you'll, you'll probably see something more like this, with just one radio stack, NAV1 and NAV2, and there's a big hole here, okay? Or, or a sheet to cover it up. So you won't necessarily have all in the real aircraft, but what I like about uh, what Just Flight have been thinking of is that they'll include a fully loaded aircraft, is what I'm saying. So that's great. So I'm going to leave it with the, the more modern look. Great. Uh, also, uh, what else do they have here? We have, uh, where was I there here? H oh, yeah, there's HSI here. This is HSI here, right? And a direction indicator. This is used for NAV as well, for your ADF. Uh, you can switch that to a standard, if I hit it here, look, a standard direction indicator. Okay, it's a gyro. That's nice as well. You can switch the yokes on and off. There go the yokes because you want to get underneath the butt, underneath them to have a look at stuff. Now you can press the, the base of the yoke here as well. That'll switch it on and off. Circuit breakers even work, look. Brilliant. Uh, great, uh, even the air vents. And uh, they also have a fan on here. Some And some aircraft, they, they do have a fan here, this isn't. Well, it's not gonna work, is it? Do you know why? Because the battery's master's off. So let's switch on the battery master, battery master, battery master. Ooh. Uh, I'll come to that now in a second. Uh, you left your, uh, uh, aircraft states, okay, ready for takeoff, ready for start, cold and dark. So you can have it ready for takeoff with the engine started. You can have it ready just before engine start and cold and dark like it is now. Maintenance. Now, I have to tell you, the aircraft uh, will run uh, the oil slowly down, the oil quantity. Uh, you don't want to run out of oil because your engine will stop, so you can refill oil. Nice little sound there. Uh, and battery volts, you can recharge the battery. Now, if I have the battery on here, I'm going to put on the battery master, by the way. I can hear the gyro starting up. And it's brilliant. Uh, I put the fan on. Hear it? Uh, so that's great. Now, if I sat here, uh, and I also, uh, you want the avionics switch on. But anyway, I'll come to that in a second. If I sat here for half an hour with the battery running, it's going to run down and you won't be able to start the aircraft. That's like in real life. So you don't, you want to be quick. You want to get the engine started as soon as you can within reason uh, because you, you won't be able to start the engine because you need the battery to start the engine. And then the, the engine, when it's running, will charge the battery. So uh, you just want to make sure your battery's charged. So let's kick off the engine here uh, and get started in our circuit because I'm boring you to tears. My yipper yappery. Uh, there may be some, I can't guarantee I land quite successfully, to be honest with you today. Let's start up. Fuel is on, the right tank. Mixture's rich. Brakes are on. Uh, the fuel's all organized, so let's hit that start switch. Let me just get you a view there so you can see the engine. There we go. There we go. Excellent. Engine started sounds great. Also, of course, on the just flight, you can open the window. They have that lovely change in sound. I love that. Just a nice little thing. Just brings that immersion to you. Okay, so uh, all the wings and tie downs are gone. Uh, I'm going to use the mouse for everything today. Brakes off. I'm going to put my feet in the manual brakes. You saw it move forward there, I hope. That's just like in the real thing, by the way. It will taxi forward on asphalt on idle, idle power. Now, my um, feet in the brakes. I put the brake back on. Great, so I can leave my feet. 
Uh, and let's put the avionics master on. Uh, it's somewhere usually around. There's usually a button. It's down here in this version. There we go. Avionics master is on. Uh, the reason uh, I left that until after engine start is that I don't run down the battery. Uh, happy days. Uh, I should have had my anti-collision lights on. I'm not following any checklists, as you notice. Uh, and then my alternator should be an alt and all that kind of stuff. I don't have to follow those checklists really today. Uh, let's put on some lighted here. These are the lights for night flying, okay? Uh, let me just change the time of day so you can see it actually uh, in the dark. Uh, let's just come up here very quickly. Let's go to the weather and 12.15, uh, there we go. So we're at night time now. So I got my lights on there. Alt L, by the way, is your, they simulate a light at the top of your head for night flying. Uh, we can kind of see there's some light at your end, okay, fine. Let's turn on some lights here. So we've got this one here. And we've got this one here. Uh, it's not the best, but up the top, of course, for night flying, there's usually a red light. They never work in the real world. And of course, I can't see it. Alt L. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's turn him on. Little red light. Uh, Alt L then off. And then it'll all be nicely lit up in kind of a red tone. The reason it's red so it doesn't wreck your night flying. Your night vision, should I say. So that uh, looks great uh, for night flying. Let's have a look and see what it looks like outside. I have my strobes on and the beacon on. That looks great. Happy days. Uh, let's go back into the cockpit and get back to daylight so you can see what we're doing. Right, let's, uh, let's move forward, shall we? Brakes are off and, and get a bit of power. Have the brakes off? I have the brakes off. No, yeah, now the brakes are off. I just couldn't see it from my seat position. Happy days. So uh, we're going to do a few circuits. Uh, I'm sitting a bit high. I just lower myself a little bit there. That's good. Uh, clear right and left. I will take off. We'll just backtrack. There's no real wind here today. Uh, and not bad weather. A few showers in the distance. Uh, let me just see the taxiing one more time. Just testing the brakes there. I just want to see how it feels. Yeah, okay, that's good. Uh, the rudders are working very well. That was a bug. It, was, it wasn't a bug, it was just one of those things at Microsoft initially where uh, it wouldn't turn properly with your rudder pedals. This is behaving quite realistically now. This is good. So I'll uh, hit my brakes again, even the sounds. That's good. So I'm just slowing down with the brakes and I'm going to turn around and do a quick circuit. Uh, around we go. That's much better with the pedals. That works really well. That works really well. Just get myself at the center line. A bit braking. Great. Okay, so let's put one stage of flaps up. Not, not all of them. Uh, it's best with a controller. It's a little bit fiddly with the mouse, I have to admit. There we go. Uh, as you can see, the flaps here are come down a little bit. Great. Happy days. Uh, let's go fly. Full power. Uh, off we go. Airspeed is alive. These and peas are in the green. We're going uphill now. Uh, raise the nose. Ooh, very dodgy. Positive right gear is fixed. And stunning. I love Saba. Saba does please me. Great scenery. And it's free. Uh, flaps up. Go on. No. There we go. Flaps are up. Uh, happy days. Let's take a little bit of the power back. Trim it up. And we're good to go. So, yeah, very nice. It does feel... Uh, it does feel quite heavy on the, in the nose. You know, as I kind of check it around. Uh, that feels good. So I'm going to go up to a thousand feet. We have a little bit of weather. Am I going to lose sight of the runway? Am I going into the clouds? A little bit. <laughs> so let's just go downwind here and get in the cruise. Now, actually, while I'm in downwind, I'm going to do just a quick stall. Just to, to see how it feels. Uh, it is quite stable. It is more... They do, feel, they do feel to me, at least, these aircraft in the real world a little bit more, a little bit more stable because they're heavier, you know? Now, I'm not flying this as I should. I'm just trying, kind of throwing it around a bit here. 
uh, I'd be very different in the real aircraft. Just gonna level off a thousand feet here. There we go. Uh, there we go. Happy days. A little bit of rain. That's nice. 2200 RPM. RPM, please. Where's the RPM indicator? There it is down here. No wonder I couldn't see it. There's the RPM. 2200 RPM. There you go. Uh, that's bizarre. That's for me recognizing the sound at 2200 RPM. Isn't that bizarre? Well, that's like in the real world. You, you recognize the sounds of the aircraft. Not quite level yet. That's okay. Now, uh, there's the airport there. I'm going to do just a quick stall. Okay, let's, let's try it really aggressively this time. I'm going to bring the nose right up. Not too much. Right there. There's the stall warner. And there's the nose coming down. And it's dropped the left wing. And I'm going to recover down into the glide. And then add power. So, yeah. It's... it's it depends. Some aircraft in the real world are different than others. Uh, it just seems this is very forward centre gravity in this one. Probably does. I'm not going to bother checking just now. I'll have a quick look. Uh, let's have a look here. I don't want to bore you to tears. Centre of gravity, yeah, it's okay. You know, I, I'll have to look into that further. But it handles very well. So if I just do a steep turn here while it's looking at the window only. Let's get 2200 RPM set there. 45 degree turn. I'm actually getting quite low, aren't I? That should be about, it's different, I've got a different seat position here. Now, that's the view I want. I'm looking outside now, only. I'm not looking at the instruments. I'm just looking outside. And that, that's handling like a real one there. I have to adjust it a bit now. I'm not turning steep enough. I'm climbing too much there now. There's the picture I want. It's much more sensitive in the simulator. Uh, and that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Let's get back to the airfield. Uh, if you put the the uh, hand over the, the the flap lever, if I put mouse towards me, the, the scroll wheel, much easier. So great, they've thought of that as well. So that's brilliant. Uh, I do like to just fly the aircraft quite good. There's a lot to them uh, and they're nice and simple as they would be in real life. Now I'm coming in way too high, I'm way off the center line. Uh, very, very messy. And this, this is where you should have, you know, a reasonably sterile cockpit. Adding a bit of power. I want to stop early as I can. I'll make a, a firm landing. You know. Okay, here we go. I want to get in the center line. Oh, it's very heavy in the nose. Oh, that's like the real thing. It is heavy in the nose. There we go. Wheels are touched down. Get back on the center line. Add some brakes because we're going to run out of runway. I'm going to run out of runway. Oh my God. Almost. Almost. So that, folks, um, is my first look showcase of the PA-28 20, Warrior 2. Uh, I'm going to be streaming this on Sunday. Okay? I'm going to be streaming this on Sunday. And uh, I'll have a further look into it then. But from the aesthetics point of view, all the instruments, the behavior of the aircraft, it's a pretty good one. Uh, if you're, if you, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're thinking if you, you want to fly something that you can actually do in real life, yeah, the wire is very popular. Happy days. Yep. In conclusion, the uh, PA-28 uh, from just right here, uh, it gets the thumbs up for me, for sure. Now, uh, I do understand there is a difference between flying a real aircraft and a simulated aircraft, but I'd be on the side of saying this is a study level aircraft. And if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd like to know. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's study level for a PA-28. Can you get any better than that? In a simulator on your on your home PC? No. It's the best PA-28 I've seen for any flight simulator. Um, never mind Microsoft Flight Simulator. So yeah, it's the best out there. Uh, if you disagree with me, let me know. I'll be streaming with this aircraft this Sunday on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, do join us at 2100 hours Irish time. Just search Gripper Sim and Twitch and let me know what you think then. And until then, I guess I'll go back to my hibernation. And I will see you September 1st. Yes.